Hello everyone and welcome to part two in this series on modeling and texture painting in Blender. In the first part we modeled the handle of the X and now we're going to finish up the rest of the model in this part and to make that easier we're going to add a mirror modifier. And first I'm going to type 3 and 5 on the number pad which takes me into right orthographic view. Then under my add image settings I'm going to switch it from all views to front which means if I press 1 in 5 on the numpad, I can go into front orthographic view and it will show the reference image, but it won't from any other angle. Now I'll press tab to go into edit mode and switch to vertex select. And now I'll use B to box select this half of the model. And just zoom in to make sure that none of those center vertices are selected. Now I'll type X and delete those vertices. And now we're ready to add the mirror modifier. So we'll go over to the modifiers tab, which is this little wrench, and then click add modifier and choose mirror. And by default, that's set to the X axis. So we need to uncheck the X and check the Y axis. And there's a few other settings in the mirror modifier that I like to change. And the first of which is the uh, the Adjust Edit Cage to Modifier tab. So now I can select a, a vertex from either side. And I also need to check the clipping so that now the, the center is, is connected. Okay, so we're ready to get back into modeling. I'm going to go into Face Select mode and then select this back face and extrude it out to where it meets the center of that diamond shape in the reference image. And because of the way those normals are facing, it actually extruded out a little so we can pull it towards the center so that it becomes more narrow. And then we can scale it down. So if you look at the reference image, you can see an outside line and an inside line. I'm going to scale this down to the inside line. Now I can extrude out again and scale it down and grab it with G to position it to where this reference line is and then rotate it with R. And once again, because of the way those normals are facing, uh, we need to pull them, those faces towards the center again so that it looks like the, the back end of the blade is, is becoming more narrow. And now let's extrude out one more time. Then we can press Alt-M and choose Collapse and then choose vertex select and grab this vertex and drag it down and then in so that they connect with the make sure your clipping is enabled now i'll go into edge select and i'll select this center edge along the top and go to front orthographic view and use g to grab it and move it up so that it starts to create that uh, sharper edge of the axe I'll select this middle one on the bottom as well and do the same thing. Just uh, grab it and use rotate and scale to help align it to that reference image. Okay, so that's looking all right. I'll just type Z to go back into wireframe. And I think I'm going to grab this edge here and move it so that it's right in the middle of that diamond uh, shape on the reference. Okay, the back end looks done, so we can move on to the, the front part of the X. So go into face select, and then extrude this out. And as I mentioned before, because of the way these normals are facing, uh, it always extrudes out and becomes really broad. So one way that we can fix that is we can type SX0, which will align the mesh to the X axis. And now it's completely straight. So. Um, now when we, we extrude it out, it won't be so broad. But I'm going to rotate it and align it to the, the center of that uh, little cutout in the reference image. Just make sure this little dot at the end of the face is in the center of that shape. And then I'll pull these faces together so it's more narrow. Okay, and now I can extrude out again. And scale up so that it matches the inside line on that reference image. And then I can delete these faces by pressing X and choose Delete Faces. 
Then I'll use Control R to add this loop cut in the middle and go to Vertex Select and select these two vertices and then type J, which will join them. Now I'll go back to Edge Select and I can select this bottom edge and use G to grab it and pull it down. And do the same thing with the top. This starts to round out the shape of the axe and make it look like it has a you know, a sharper edge along the top and the bottom. You can rotate it a little to match the reference. Okay, and now we can start to create these little cutouts in the X by using Vertex Bevel. Uh, but actually, before we do that, let's go into Edge Select, and we will bevel these edges here. So we'll select that top edge, and then this bottom edge as well. Okay, so just make sure that these two are selected, and then we'll type Control B. Now I'll go back to Vertex Select, and I'll select these three vertices, and I'll use Alt M and choose Merge at Center. And now we can bevel that vertex by using Shift Control B and drag the mouse out until it meets the outside line on the reference image. Okay, and now I can press X and delete those faces. And if I hold Alt, I can right click on the mouse to select that whole loop, and then press EY to extrude on the Y axis only, and then scale that edge in. Now let's do the same thing on the other side. We'll select the center vertex, and use Shift Control B, then X to delete those faces. I can select this edge and press EY to extrude it on the Y axis and scale it down. Okay, so now we can start working on the next part. And in edit mode, I'll type Shift A and add a plane. And now I'll type RX90 to rotate it on X 90 degrees and then scale it down. Uh, and right now they're stuck together, those two planes, so uh, we'll need to uncheck clipping so that we can separate them. And now I'll use G to grab it and move it up, and S and X to scale it on the X axis to make it thinner. And this will be the little piece that attaches the blade to the X. So we'll scale it down again, and then press I to inset. And then with that inner part selected, we can drag it out to give it some shape. and now drag the whole thing together. Uh, but it won't connect right now because we unchecked clipping, so we need to recheck it. And now we can connect the center. Okay, so now I'm going to use Control R and scroll up on the mouse wheel to create two edge loops. And now I can pull those forward on the x-axis to create that bowed shape. And now rotate the whole piece and, and try to line it up with the reference image. And it might not be exact, it's, it's kind of difficult uh, to, to line this piece up uh, perfectly with a reference image, but, you know, of course, just get it close. Okay, so now I think we're going to skip right ahead to creating the blade, and then we'll come back to creating those small pieces that, uh, that connect the blade to the rest of the axe. And the best way to create a weirdly shaped thing like the blade is uh, to actually do it with a single vertex. So in the left hand corner you can click File and then choose User Preferences and then under Add-ons just type in the search bar uh, Extra and then look for this add-on here it's Add Mesh Extra Objects and check it and then click on Save User Settings. And now when you're in edit mode and you type shift A, you have all of these extra uh, options here. And we can choose the first one, which is single vert. Just click add single vert. And that adds it right to the 3D cursor. So we can use G to grab it. And let's position it all the way at the top of the blade. And this part will be really easy. We just need to use E to extrude and basically just trace the whole shape of the axe. 
Uh, but we are going to ignore these little cutouts for now and just drag to the center. But you just want to extrude around the whole shape of the axe and, and stop at each point that has uh, an edge here. So you're, you're essentially leaving a vertex at each of those points and then extruding again. And again, we'll come down and, and stop in the center of this little triangle. And do the same here. I'll zoom in a little because I, I know it must be fairly difficult to see the, uh, the vertex extruding around. And although you can't see it, there's another vertex here behind this piece and another one here. Okay, and then extrude up one more. Um, and then ordinarily to connect these, we would use J to join, but because there's no face, we actually have to use F to, to add a face. So uh, F will connect those two vertices with an edge. Okay, so now to select all of the vertices, we can just type L, which selects anything that's linked, and then press F to add a face. And once again, we need to undo the clipping so that we can separate those two faces. Okay, about the same thickness as, as the piece that we created before. Okay, now we can type I to inset that face so that it matches the, the inner line on the reference image. And use Alt and right click to select that outer loop. And we need to check clipping again so that we can connect these two uh, edges together. Okay, so in low poly modeling, it's good practice to keep everything either quads or triangles. Um, so right now we have this big N gun, which is a polygon that has more than four sides. Uh, so I'm just going to straighten out some of these vertices. I can select these two and type Alt M and choose Merge at Center. And that will change that four-sided uh, polygon into a triangle. Let me lower the opacity on this reference image, and it might make it a little easier to see the uh, the edges and the the vertices. So I'll just align these so that they're matched with the reference image. And I can select these two and type J to join the vertices. I'll do the same thing here. And then can select these two and J again. Just lining up each one as I create the, the new edge, I'm just making sure that each side is uh, aligned to the reference. And again, this part's pretty straightforward. It's just basically connecting the dots just uh, following the, the outline on the reference image. So connect these two. And then finally, these two. Okay, so now let's make these little chips or openings in the X. So we can select this vertex and type Shift Control B to do a vertex bevel. And we'll make that about the width of the opening. Now I can select the first vertex and then this one and type Alt M and choose at last because you want to merge it at the second uh, vertex that you selected. Then we can do the same thing here, Shift Control B. And I'm just lining up my vertices as I go, making sure that it's matching the image. Then select this one, select that one, Alt M, merge at last. And then we have one more. So shift control B and select these two vertices and merge at last. Okay, so now we can select these three triangle faces and then type X and delete those faces. Now I'll go into edge select and select all of the edges around the faces that we just deleted 
and I'll type EY to extrude them in on the Y axis. Okay, so that's it for the blade part. All we need to do now is create the little brackets that attach the blade to the rest of the X. I'm going to make this part a little thicker. I want it to be more distinguishable from the rest of the, uh, the head of the X so that it's obvious that it's a separate piece. Okay, so now I will press tab to go into edit mode. And I'll type shift A to add another plane. And they'll be connected, so I need to uncheck the clipping. Now I can type RX90 to rotate it on X90 degrees, scale it in, and then, of course, move them apart. Okay, I'm also going to type G and grab them and move them out to the side so we can work on them without anything in the background. I'll type S and Z to scale on the Z axis, and then use Control R to add a loop cut and scroll up on the mouse wheel to create two cuts and now I'll scale them on X so that the outer edges are more square and then we'll use Control R on each of the outer faces to create loop cuts and then we'll select both of them and type SZ to scale them on the Z axis then we'll add another loop cut horizontally and select the outer vertices only and scale them on the x-axis. And this begins to give the, the outside of it a rounder shape. Now to select that whole piece, we can just hover over with the mouse and type L, which selects anything linked. Okay, and then we can use I to inset. And then drag this out a bit on the y-axis. That starts to give it some shape. Okay, and then I can use Alt and right mouse click to select this outer edge and type F to add a face. And because I'm not too worried about the topology on the inside, I'm just going to use Alt P to add a single vertex, which just makes a, a bunch of triangles. I so we'll have to set this poke offset value back to zero so that it's flat. And then as for the topology on the outside, we can lower this number of uh, vertices a little. Um, you know, that's important to do in low-poly objects, especially if you're using them for the game engine or so forth. It's, it's always good to reduce the, the count down as much as you can. So I'll go to Edge Select and I'll select this center edge and these two edges and I'll type GG and that's the edge slide and I can slide this all the way down. And that will merge them with the vertices below and then I can type W and choose Remove Doubles and that removed 13 vertices. I think we had some extra ones also from part one when we did the um, when we did the little spikes around the ring. But uh, but yes, yeah, so always make sure that you're removing your doubles. So now I'll just scale this down and press Z to go into wireframe, and I'll start to align uh, these pieces up with the reference image. Okay, so I'm just rotating and scaling to get them uh, to get it aligned as best as possible. And then I'll move it in so that it's making contact with the blade and the other part of the axe. Okay, now I'll type Shift D to duplicate that piece and I'll rotate it into position. Okay, and so the final piece is just the little uh, the little bolts that are um, on the ends of each side of the bracket. So we'll type Shift A again and add a cube, and make sure that the clipping is deselected so that you can move them apart. And I'll scale them down. And now I'll type W and choose Subdivide Smooth, which rounds the cubes out into a kind of a low poly sphere. And because we won't see the back side of these, we can just select all of these faces. Then type X and delete faces. Okay, I can continue to scale them down and move them in. 
And at this point, I won't be using the reference image. I'm just scaling it in to roughly the, the right size and then centering it at the end of each of those uh, brackets. So I'll type Shift to D to duplicate it. And now I'll select both of those pieces so I can move them back so that they make contact with the rest of the object. Okay, looks pretty good. Now I'll type Shift D again, duplicate these two and move them up and then I'll just rotate them into position. Okay, so I believe we are done. So in the next part, we'll get into our adding seams and, and UV unwrapping. And then finally, we'll be ready to start painting. Uh, so I am just gonna save this really quick. I'm gonna call it the Emerald X. But I hope you guys enjoyed this part and I will see you in the next one. Thanks again for watching.